Hey, History Seeking here. Join us as we take a tour around Worksop Priory. Founded in 1103 by William de Lovett, Lord of Hallamshire, and home to canons of the Augustian Order until its dissolution in November 1539. The early 14th century gatehouse was constructed in the main to accommodate travellers. The gatehouse is classed as a walk-through shrine and is one of only two surviving in its kind in England, as the other surviving example in Canterbury. Pilgrims would enter one side, kneel to pray before an altar and leave on the other. The ground floor is divided by what was once a public road. The ceiling above the archway has original medieval timbers and the upper floor is accessed by a stone stairway added in the 15th century. The original access to the upper floor was by a staircase on the exterior northeast corner. A chapel dedicated to the Virgin Mary and shrine were added at the southeast corner later in the 14th century. Guests were accommodated in the upper chamber, where they were allowed to stay for three days. To one side of this chamber is a room for the brother guest master. The statues in the higher niches represent St Augustine and St Cuthbert with a central figure representing the Holy Trinity. The lower niches probably once contained statues of Knights of Lovett and Furnival families.
the Augustian Priory of St Mary in St Cuthbert was founded around 1120 by William de Lovett, Lord of Worksop Manor. Wealthy landowners like Lovetot often gave money to found monasteries, both to ensure salvation for their souls and to demonstrate their power and status. There are two late Norman Western Towers, measuring 90 feet high, the northwest one with eight bells. The 12th century West Doorway is heavily moulded into the North Isle. The first 18 cannons are believed to have come from Huntingdon. At that time, Lovitz were the landowners. Their descendants, the Furnivals, Talbots and Howards, rose to become one of the most powerful families in England and their fortunes of their priory rose with them. Worksop Priory was formerly known as Radford Priory. On the north side of the great church were the cloister and living accommodation, unusual as they were normally to the south in the monastic layouts. The mill and kitchens, where the church hall now stands, were served with water from the river Wrighton. There were farm buildings, barns and stores, splendid rooms for the prior, a place for writing and a library.
As we walk down this side of the church, we'll see some items from the Priory. To the left are some items which remain from the original priory and a little bit further down there are some stone coffins. Before us we see the remains of the Solarium known as an Undercroft or Storehouse. Wixop Priory was well provided for, and in 1291, its taxable income amounted to £167, making it the third wealthiest monastic house in the country. This is a 12th century west doorway to the meeting room. The south entrance is a single bay rib vaulted porch with internal benches and crusader cross graffiti. The door is made from oak with wrought iron and dates from the late 12th century. The Norman clerestory is separated from the aisles by arcades of ten bays either side. The piers alternatively cylindrical and octagonal. The triforium is unusual with a wide arch and smaller one either side.
is a south aisle. The walls were restored and rebuilt to a much greater height, and lancet windows with nailhead decoration replaced the medieval originals during Nicholas's restoration. Before us is the Bowl of Piscina from the early 14th century St Leonard's Chapel was discovered during building work in the late 1920s and preserved. This is the mutilated alabaster tomb of Baron Thomas Furnival the Hasty. Thomas III, Lord Furnival, fought with King Henry III at Cressy in 1341. This is a tomb of Lady Maud Neville, who died in 1420. She was the daughter of Sir Thomas Neville and the first wife of John Talbot, first Earl of Shrewsbury. This is Sir Thomas Neville, Treasurer of England. This is the entrance to the Lady Chapel dating from the mid-13th century, and it was originally adjoining the southern wall of the Priory Church. It wasn't completely demolished after the Reformation, although Thornton's 1677 engraving shows that its roof and northern wall, shared with a monastic choir, had fallen or been taken down. on the north wall of the chapel reads the chapel of our lady was built in the early part of the 13th century by Maud Lady Furnival wife of Gerard first Lord of Furnival it was closed for divine worship by the order of the commissioner of King Henry VIII at the dissolution of the abbey on the 15th day of November in the year of our Lord 1539 Thomas Stokes been prior for some time it was used as a burying place for the old families in the district and was then suffered to fall into ruin and decay. It was saved from total destruction by the Reverend James Appleton, who became vicar in the year 1847. After the lapse of nearly four centuries, it was restored for the worship of God and the parental memory of the men of the parish of Worksop, who fell in the Great War in 1914 to 1918.
This is the chancel. The small rose window retained from Nicholson's 1845 to 1849 restoration. It comprises of decorative segments and series of depictions of builders and masons tools, including set squares, a trowel, a hammer, dividers and a set square, a saw, axe and crossbow, pincers and a mallet. Before us is the nave and the 1974 font. In the wall between the south porch and the southwest tower is an undated carved stone head which was discovered during repair work in 2017. In front of us is the West Window by Helen Whittaker. In 2003, the window dissipates St Saint Cuthbert, his right hand raised in blessing, and his left the crowned head of King Oswald, that was buried with him for safekeeping. He has otters at his feet. Their presence relates to the story of a monk who saw the otters restoring warmth to Cuthbert's numb feet. After St Saint Cuthbert had been partially emerged, in the sea at night, chanting praise of God. This is the original 19th century Gothic font. In the window, we've got Mary and the infant Christ, and St Cuthbert below, in his bishop's mitre holding a crozier in his hand. His right hand, he carries the head of the king and martyr St Oswald. This three-bay ribbed vaulted parlour was originally the choir vestry but restored in 2016 and is now used as a meeting room. On November the 15th, 1538, the King's Commissioner demanded entry to the prior at the gatehouse. He had brought the order for closure. The prior William Stokes and 16 canons were to be pensioned off the last in a series of 19 priors over 436 years. <music> Through centuries of war and peace, the canons continued their daily round of work and prayer until changes in English religious life under Henry VIII. He brought all this to an end.
North Isle has plain vaulting. It dates from 1845 to 1849 restoration, but the style may have been modelled on that which it replaced, indicating an early 13th century date for the aisle. The 13th century tomb recess on the inner wall, which may have originally have contained the tomb of Gerard de Furnival. A recut cross slab now occupies the recess. Over 2,000 acres of land, the buildings and the treasures were all to be seized by the Crown. All the fine buildings were to be dismantled. Much of the land and treasures went to the Earl of Shrewsbury, on condition that he and his successors, as Lord of the Manor of Worksop, provided a fine glove for the right hand of the Sovereign at the coronation, an obligation still in force today. The townspeople were determined that at least part of the church should remain, Eventually, they were allowed to keep the nave as a parish church and the gatehouse as the vicarage. Later, this was to become the first elementary school in England. Eventually, all the monastic buildings were plundered for stone and lead and collapsed into ruin. Sir Gilbert Scott's Redross, installed in the East End in 1858, is now located in the North Transept. When it was moved in 1935 or soon after, its stone arcades and marble shafts set off its rich colours and gilding, cleaned and conserved in 2019. Many original Norman features can still be seen, including the arch of the west door, and the incredible survival of the south door itself, made of yew and decorated with iron scroll work that dates to 1250. Around this door have been carved Jerusalem crosses, a symbol of the Crusaders who went to fight with King Richard in the Holy Land. Gerald de Furnival, Lord of the Manor at the time, joined this crusade with his sons. Gerald and his son Thomas were killed. Thomas's heart was brought back from the Holy Land by his brother, and it was placed in the Lady Chapel, which Maud de Lovett built onto the church, to commemorate her husband and son.
Thank you all for watching. Please check out their Facebook page in the description. Take care and have a great week ahead.